into custody the last one Okay, thank you very much for joining as well. Um, as I said, if you wish to um, have your videos off, you're more than welcome because I know it's a busy Thursday. Um, but if you want to keep them on, that's great. I absolutely love it. So um, the choice is yours as well. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off uh, and just be honest with you. I could be here all evening talking about reading for pleasure. Um, there is so much that you could talk about and so much that you could share on so many levels. But I will try to keep it as succinct. Um, as possible and purposeful for you as teachers and teaching assistants in the classroom as much as possible. And I hope that by the end of this, if there's at least one, two, or even maybe three golden nuggets that you can take away and implement, that would be fantastic as well. So just so we're all kind of clear, reading for pleasure, what do we mean by it? Well, it's defined as reading that is freely chosen or that readers freely and enthusiastically continue after it is assigned. So we're kind of moving away from those reading comprehension lessons, those reading in class. And it's where children are being able to give that choice to, um, to choose what they wish to read and do it with pleasure. Do it enthusiastically is the key word there. And that's taken from the National Curriculum Guidelines. Studies have found that reading pleasure has many forms and that each form provides distinct benefits. Um, there are five in total, and I'll kind of go through those through the, um, the outline of this session. Um, the one I find really interesting is the play pleasure and immersive reading for pleasure, where children are given a chance to, um, to kind of immerse themselves through play, which is really kind of key for that early years, key stage one. And then also social reading for pleasure, being able to relate through social situations in terms of their books as well. Taken together, these pleasures explain why um, reading for pleasure promotes cognitive progress and social possibility, um, even in a kind of wisdom and wholeness as well. So if we could break it down into one simple sentence, reading for pleasure is all about showing your enjoyment with the children in reading and for them to immerse themselves and do so freely and enthusiastically. I'm also going to intersperse today with some kind of key facts, things that I found out which are really interesting. So blown away by this, but reading, if you read every day for six minutes, it can reduce your stress levels by 68%. So even if you just choose to take six minutes out of your day in the classroom and read with the children, already you are reducing your stress level and your workload as well. So it's a kind of a quick tip, a quick win to help with your mental health and well-being as well. Um, something to promote with the children is having that five minute a day read. Don't do it for questioning, just do it purely for the love of it. Do it for the laughter, do it for the sharing and the enjoyment as well. So what are the benefits of reading for pleasure? Well, these can come both for educational purposes as well as for personal development. Developing a, po a positive relationship between reading frequency, enjoyment and attainment. Um, it has been shown that those who consistently read their educational success is far greater, as well as their social and um, economic status. There's been a positive link between positive attitudes and reading and scoring well on reading assessments. And again, I, I think as teachers in our teaching profession, we're fully aware of that. Those that read are going to do better in their reading assessments, are going to do better in their subjects. So what we need to look at is those children who don't read, how we can engage them, because it is like unlocking the key to their learning. And that's something that I always used to share with my class. If you can read, if you can access that book, you are unlocking the learning for the rest of your life. Um, the other benefits include text comprehension, you uh, increase in grammar, uh, grammar and punctuation knowledge. Um, you also include your vocabulary as well. And potentially you're increasing that pleasure later in life. You'll carry on your reading um, into your later years as well. So another quick fact for you, when children have a home library or in our instances, a class library, as little as 20 books, they can achieve three more years of schooling than children who don't have books at home. So thinking about that as teachers, if you are providing your children with access to good quality or high quality texts, you are potentially improving their schooling by three more years than those that don't read. So that's a really key thing. We've got six minutes of reading, 20 books, if they can access those already. So just a couple of trends with teachers, and I can tell you this now, that when I was compiling this list, nothing was brand new. It was all very much what we've heard before, and it's how we as the teachers teaching profession can help narrow that gap as well. So recent studies, 22% of children said they enjoyed reading, whereas as much as 12% reported that they did not enjoy reading at all. 
that 12 percent taken from a, from a majority is quite a lot and if you think about your class you will have that percentage who dislike reading or who are not engaged if we compare ourselves against the international market and um, england reports less frequent readers for pleasure outside of school than children in many other countries and are we just drumming children into the fact that reading should be for test only are we providing that opportunity for reading with pleasure there's also evidence suggests that age affects attitudes to reading as children get older they become less frequent readers However, as they get older, sometimes they do read for uh, read a much greater amount in a shorter period of time. So again, we need to work out how we can keep those engaged as they grow older. Are we using the right texts? Are you supplementing children with the right information and materials that they require? No big brainer here, but studies have shown that boys enjoy reading less than girls. And again, those from lower social economic backgrounds read less. So if you think about our disadvantaged, if we think about our boys, um, again, how are we engaging those? How are we setting that trend, that pleasure, reading for pleasure? Also, um, this is quite interesting, children from Asian backgrounds have a more positive attitude to reading. So again, tapping into that market and looking at how we can then promote that across other cultures as well. Children learn 4,000 to 12,000 words per year through reading. So again, now if we start to equate all of our facts together, six minute reading a day, access to 20 books or more, you're already improving children's vocabulary for up to 4,000 to 12,000 words. And that is a huge uh, gap, 4,000 to 12,000. And if you think about your classroom, that's a very big spectrum. And it's how much are you closing that gap and narrowing it so that all children have the same vocabulary as well. So trends within reading, obviously boys enjoy reading less than girls. 58% of girls enjoy reading greatly compared to that of boys, 43%. Um, in all countries, boys are not only less, than like, uh, less likely to read than girls, but they're also less likely to do it for enjoyment. They're doing it purely for test practice only or for a particular reason. Girls are more likely to read fiction or magazines and boys are more likely to read newspapers or comics. So again, looking at your classrooms, what have you got available that can target all different types of readers in your class? On average, boys are further behind in reading than girls. Again, on average, it's an equivalent to one school year. So what are we doing to minimise those gaps and close those gaps rapidly? And one study has reported that boys are, near, uh, are reading nearly as much as girls, but they tend to read easier books. So again, when you're next with your class, look around that landscape. What books are they choosing? Are they being directed to the right book that they need? Are they being directed to a challenging book, a book that is appropriate to their age as well? So 20 minutes a day and you'll read 1,800,000 words per year. Just just crazy facts. And again, just thinking that six minutes of reading, children having some free time reading, already their vocabulary is going to be increased. If there's one thing that we're taking away from this is that we have got to give those opportunities for children to read and trust me i know being a class teacher done it all and trying to find that time in a very busy schedule can be very tight but actually safeguard that time more than anything we safeguard time for writing we safeguard time for mathematics we need to actually take time into our timetables and say actually this is for free reading time this is to give children that time to read to me for me to read to them and build that in key stage one are fantastic at doing that but as we move into key stage two why is that lost where are we losing that time to read to children as well so the next couple of bits is I want to talk to you some strategies that we can do to help develop reading for pleasure, really develop a culture where reading is a positive thing to achieve. So make sure that um, children have access to resources and having books of their own because uh, it has a huge impact on attainment. Children who have access to a wide range of books enjoy reading and, are read, and read more frequently. We know as teaching profession that the budget is tight. OK, I know that for years I fight, fight, fight to get more books. So we have to look at other ways where we can make sure that we have got healthy book corners and healthy access to a range of books as well. So a couple of quick things. Beg, borrow and pilfer rather than steal from your children's parents. 
ask them if they finish with any books that they don't need, if they're wishing to donate any books, can these be donated? In COVID times, obviously, please make sure that these are uh, kept isolated for a period of time before bringing into the classroom. But again, asking parents to constantly donate if they do have any can help refresh your cycle as well. When I was uh, used to be in class, one of the things I used to always scour was uh, Amazon Marketplace and eBay and look for those really cheap books or where people were giving bundles or collections of books. A couple of pounds and you could get 20 books. And these are really great to constantly refresh and restock as well. Also fundraisers. Talk to your school about that. And I know it's difficult at the moment. I, I'm completely aware of that. But think how we can be creative in order to generate that extra bit of money so that we can beef up your book counts and your book corners as much as possible. Try to develop reading for pleasure as a choice. Choice and interest are highly related. If there's one thing that I really hate to see is that a child has been uh, given a detention or they're kept in at break time and they're told to read. That is instantly going to turn children off reading because they're going to see it as a form of punishment. So instead, give that as the freedom of choice during the actual lessons. Build that time in, five minutes, 10 minutes, where we're going to stop what we're doing today and actually I'm going to read you a book or I'm going to read you a chapter or someone is going to come and read to you as well. Building that time for that paired shared reading today, all the children that are A are going to read to child B and tomorrow child B is going to read to child A, given that vice versa. I've also seen on Twitter uh, so many of our schools, Brookfield, Ching Park Farm, where you've actually been doing virtual calls to one another and I know it happened last week during nursery rhyme week where we're actually taking that chance to share that practice and again that is a really nice opportunity to get children engaged get children excited again that's something really quick and easy to organize a teacher could read over multiple classes via that virtual hangout literacy targeted rewards such as books or book vouchers have been found to be more effective so think about how you can have an incentive to, or a reward to engage those uh, early readers to engage those boys, those reluctant readers as much as possible. And then also target the parents and the home environment. Make sure you're sending home books. Make sure you're talking to parents about books. Make sure you're sharing and recommending those books to parents as well. Keeping that conversation, that dialogue open. They may not listen to you on the first time. They probably won't listen to you on the second time, but you bang on about it enough and keep talking to them about books and sharing those books. Slowly, you are showing them the importance of why it, what they need to do as well. Reading for pleasure is strongly influenced by relationships between teachers and children, children and families. And that is the key message. If you wish to make sure that a child is reading for pleasure, then you need to model and demonstrate that at every opportunity. Share what you love, show it with love and demonstrate that at all times with passion because children will find that infectious. You know, standing up and championing a book that you've picked up at the weekend and saying, look, guys, this is a fantastic read. This is great. I want to share a chapter with you. I've got to read with you this passage that I found. It's great. They're going to be enticed. They're going to be intrigued. They're going to want to continue that as well. And that's why sometimes I start a book with a class and then I offer it out to see who would like to finish it. And most times it's almost like a fight over, oh, I want to read it first. I want to finish it. And again, it's that building that, that momentum up with the children as well. If you read just one book a day to your child, they will have read 1,825 books by their fifth birthday. Now, I'm no mathematician. I'm not the maths lead. But again, if you double that by the time they're 10, think about how much access they are going to have as well. Every day counts. Every book counts. Every book has a golden nugget that a child can take away and use later on in their life as well. Not only that, but we are improving their cultural capital, their awareness of the wider world. So again, giving them access to books is important. So reading together is the key message. Build and factor time into class to read with your children. Build in time for children to read to you and to read to others one-to-one -one in small groups, choral reading, class reading. Use of technology, visualizers, where you can put the books underneath the visualizer so children can read all together. Um, children can record their reading now with the Chromebooks and present it to other classes. You can also record virtually, and again, allowing children to read across year groups as well. I've seen some really lovely things over the last couple of weeks, the drop, stop and read method, where children just literally, there's a bell that rings, or you could do a little clap or something, 
Um, I've even seen in some classes they've got like a, a little doorbell that they bought from Amazon. They press the doorbell, every child just stops what they're doing, picks up their book and starts to read as well. Finding time in your timetable is key every day. And if it's not every day, at least try to do it every other day. Give that children that time to access those books and read. But most importantly, you need to read to the children because you are only going to develop that passion by modelling it yourself. Kids in classrooms without libraries read 50% less than kids in classrooms with libraries. Now, when I was doing this, I did a walk around my school and I just actually looked into the reading corners and I could really see the classes that accessed those reading better than those that didn't because the classrooms had inviting libraries, they were, they were fully stocked, and if they weren't fully stocked, they were demonstrated, they were used in a variety of ways that could still engage the children. I would challenge you to go around your school and have a look at everyone's libraries. Is there something you can take away? Is there something that they could improve? Is there something you could improve as a whole school? Are they refreshed? Do they look inviting? Do they look as if a place that you want to come and sit and enjoy as well? So make those fully accessible reading corners and libraries engaging, inviting and a place to, for children to learn. I know that space is tight, but again, if you give that time and you give that little bit of effort to make it inviting, children will want to go there as well. Also, one thing that I've learned is don't just make your reading corner look pretty and never use it. You've got to go over there, sit in that corner. You've got to take children over there and you've got to show them how to use it, how to not just go and waste time over there as well. Make it an area that you want to go and spend time in as a reward, as a, as a kind of champion and that you've done great today. Come and sit in our reading corner, choose some friends. Let's read that book together and let's make it an experience, make it something really nice. Something I used to do as well as have a couple of snacks, have a couple of biscuits, sometimes having a little juice drink or something where you could actually sit with the children and say, right, this is our special time. This is your reward. You had some great time this week. Let's make a moment of it as well. I'm going to read to you. Or actually, would you like to choose a book and read to me? And the other children, they're looking on going, actually, I want to be a part of that. I want to join in with that activity as well. And again, keeping that on rotation. Make sure that book corner isn't just for show, it's for use as well. Children who read one million words a year are in the top 2% of reading achievement. And again, it comes back to that, that reading for pleasure, reading every day with your children, taking five minutes out of your day. Now, this fact has probably changed from when I very first heard this, but when I was an NQT, and this is way back in biblical times as well, but um, a child who is read to every day by a child who is not read to every day, there is a staggering difference of over 55 million words. Now, I'm pretty sure that that fact has now changed considerably, but at the time that shocked me. And it's made me think that every day when I'm in that class, I always take time to stop and read to those children as well. The other thing that um, I really love, and again, I've seen some really great examples, not just in our academy, um, but again, in various schools, is where there are themed booked displays as well, where children, uh, teachers are taking that time to invest and display a range of books. Sometimes it's based around their topic. I've seen lots recently around our Egyptian topic as well, and lots based around uh, the Romans, where people have actually taken time to create an area where the books relate to one another, artifacts, objects, to really engage the children. And this is actually separate to their reading corner, and it's trying to show that reading is around the room. It's not just in one specific place, it's everywhere that we go as well. And what I really like is these are becoming interchangeable, themed around Halloween, themed around Christmas, themed around a particular book. And they're really nice to pop up so that children can go and have a look and access that kind of uh, that wider learning that they may be doing. Make sure that these are accessible. Again, they're not just for show. So children can have the chances during the day to go and have a look, spend five minutes, 10 minutes sitting down, looking through, reading, choosing those books as well. Uh, these are really, really nice to have in your schools or in your classrooms, kind of a themed display every now and then. And if you're worried about time, change it over every half term. OK, it's not a every week type of thing, unless you, you feel like you wish to do so. Um, one thing I always do, and I, I still do it now, actually, I'm going to flip the camera around and show you, um, 
is I kind of got these little perspexes. I got them on Amazon. I think it was about, I think I got about 20 to 30 for about a fiver. And then what I did around my classroom was I constantly had books up around, almost like I was like mini water stones, because what I wanted the children to see was actually, these are my choices, these are my recommendations. This is what I'm suggesting to you at all times as well. And I had these refreshed every two weeks, mainly because I was literally going out looking at books going, oh, this is a great book, I wanna read this, or this is a really nice book. And I was letting children have a look at my private collection. And I'd state that, I'd say, these are my books. So if you come to use these, you know, make sure you're looking after them. And actually they valued them more because they knew that they belonged to someone because they knew that I'd invested that time and I had that passion. So what I'm saying is that if you show that inf that passion for reading in those books, children will, will appreciate that more as well. And again, not just made for show, it's there as well. I've got it in the in the classroom i've got it in my office and again children come along and every now and then i kind of share those books as well and it's great because they are quick easy wins to have around the classroom as well and because they're up and their their cover is facing i've found that more children are engaged because they're like oh why has mr parrot picked that one what's so special about that one i want to read it as well and it's really nice when you want to showcase a particular book as well The other great one as well, um, this is a quick win around your school, is having We Are Reading and I Am Reading displays. It's really nice to showcase uh, what the whole class text can be so that, you know, you can say that this is what we're reading, but also showing children what you are reading personally as well. Um, what I would say is always keep the books appropriate. I'm not going to lie, I have seen some choices on uh, people's displays every now and then but it's really worth to say to children actually outside of the school i do read or i i, I invest in that time to read i know we're incredibly busy but reading has to be modeled it has to show that that passion comes from you as well and don't be embarrassed or afraid to to choose a range of books as well when i when i've had these on my board uh, on my door displays i've chosen things like magazines i've shown them comics that i'm reading i've shown them children's books adults books a wide range of books i'm constantly refreshing and again i talk to my children about that all the time and i say oh look guys i'm reading this today what are you reading as well and again it's that spark of discussion it's not there to question children on their comprehension attention is to show actually where's that enjoyment what are we reading currently as well whatever you do make sure these aren't just static displays that get changed once every half term I, I know that what's really nice walking around the school is that I am reading is changing regularly because teachers are taking that time to show children what they are reading as well book reviews again it's a, it's a huge passion and I know talking to children they love to read, but they become stifled by writing the review as well. So find alternative ways that children can record their learning. A really great way that I did for year sixes last year was I actually got them to open up their diaries, their homeschool diaries, and I got them to physically decorate each week with a different theme, with a different page. And I've got them to make it a really beautiful visual scrapbook where they could actually take key words from the books, where they could draw their characters out. So in, in the end, it didn't just become a, I have read pages 10 to 12, I have read pages 13 to 16. It actually became a kind of a chronological mapping of what they had read as an alternative way to show that they had read for pleasure as well and because other children started to see this it became almost thing, a thing that grew and i'm just going to jump to another slide to show you an example where we go there we go and it became a visual mapping in some way where they kept their own, own little scrapbooks um, of all the books that they read. Um, other teachers then started to join in and we started to have uh, visual scrapbooks of books. Children had their diaries, children could map out all of the things that they'd read along the way. And actually it became a much nicer way when looking at their reading journals um, and their homeschool diaries than just them writing the page number as well. Start them off by saying, I want you to pick three key words, three key adjectives, three, three verbs. Again, you can get in your grammar knowledge there as well. Draw me a picture, indicate that. If you've still got a reluctant reader who, or I shouldn't say a reluctant reader, if you've got a re person who loves reading but doesn't like to record it, they've got the Chromebooks. They have those Chromebooks. So again, they could do an audio presentation to you. They could use Adobe Sparks. They could voice record and send you a QR code. There are various ways that you can record children's reading without them feeling that they have to write at the end of it as well. However, the biggest one 
is just talking to a child. You will be able to under, you know, be able to infer whether a child has read a book by taking two minutes to five minutes out of the day and saying, what did you like about that book? What was your favourite part? Can you tell me something that's going to make me want to pick it up as well? Just having that discussion will let you know whether a child has read that book. You can then record that. You can put it down. And actually that child is then continuing that reading for pleasure. We're removing that barrier that comes with it as well. Um, reading reviews, if you wish to kind of help that in your class, I've created a bank of um, Battle of the Book reviews. And again, these are appropriate from year two all the way up to year six. And again, I've gone away and taken these books and read them. Um, sometimes again, it's, I've taken from children's ideas and bits and pieces. And what I did was I have these up on display. And um, they now sometimes on display um, on the new reading scheme as well. But it's really nice for the children to see that you've gone away and actually invested that time and said, actually, this is what I like about the book. This is what I've enjoyed. And these sometimes get shared on Twitter. I put them around the classes. Um, we put them into our newsletters and it really kind of shows a range of books. And what I've really tried to make sure is that the books I review, they are available somewhere in the school. And it's really nice to send children on a hunt and try and find those books um, to read as well. It's that whole kind of searching, creating and making it a fun, engaging experience as much as possible. If anyone would like to have a look at some of these book reviews, just drop me an email and I'm more than happy to share or put them into a folder for you to have a look at as well. Um, I've also refreshed our battle of the book list as well, and it's an ongoing refresh of that list as well. So reducing it down from 50, I chose the top 30 books and I've constantly been refreshing that, adding new titles as we go, trying to make them more current, make them more accessible, more culturally diverse as well. So children can have a, a, a range of books to read as well. We've also opened up Battle of the Books. So it's not so much how many can you read, but it's actually these are our recommended lists. If you can recommend another book in return, we'll add it to that list as well. And we still challenge children to read as many as they can, but it's a more of an open discussion um, and a building up of that list as well. Um, all of these are available. So again, if you'd like to see these or have a look at some of these, you're more than welcome to just drop me an email and I can share these in the folder as well. Whole school and uh, class book clubs as well. Now, at the moment, it's probably impossible to have a whole school book club, but it's worth something that you might want to set up in your class. You know, Friday afternoon, while some of the children are doing some art, I'm going to sit for half an hour with a group of children and have a mini book club as well. And we're going to read the same book and, you know, give them an extract. And we're just going to take that time to read together, to discuss as well. Recently, Marcus Rashford, who's done a fantastic with the free school meals, he's now going to be moving on to launching a um, book club across the entire country. And again, more information is to follow on that. But it'd be really good to have a display up in your classroom, show who he is, look at his recommendations and try and use that as a way to engage possibly those reluctant boys, those who are more into sports, to actually show them those positive male role models that are also into reading as well. But what I have found with Book Club is it's been a really great way to talk to children. It's been a really great way to uh, just have a laugh and listen to what they're reading and hear their funny moments as well. Um, so, Paula, we don't have a list, or, or I should say I don't have a list for year one, um, and that's not to say that there isn't one out there, it's just that I, I never made one for year one, um, but if you can give me a little bit of time, I can, I can definitely pull a list together as well um, and have a look through some books. Alternatively, I can definitely ask around some of the um, year one, year two teachers that may have any recommendations um, for us as well. But apologies, um, I don't have a year one one, but I can definitely make one up um, on there as well. Um, as I was going with a book club, it's purely for pleasure and, and, and it's capturing those moments um, to talk to children. I find that sometimes I, I give up 10 minutes of my lunch just to go and sit in the lunch hall. And while I'm there, I'm actually carrying a book around with me. And nine times out of 10, while I'm eating my lunch with the children, children will say, oh, what's that? Or what are you reading? And I go, oh, it's this. This is the book that I'm reading today. And I don't just carry around novels, picture books, um, anything that just will spark a conversation with that child. So I think it's really important that we carry that around and talk and immerse children. And that's why book clubs in class, whole school are really great. They were a great way just to have that fun and freedom to share what we're reading um, with others. Which then brings me on to our representation, diversity and culture. 
during the summer holidays, this was a hot topic on Twitter. And I think it's ever more so now that we need to make sure we are showing representation for all children within our schools as well, because that's one way to, to engage children and have that reading for pleasure. Make sure that you've got on display, make sure you've got in your classes books that represent the class that you are teaching, someone that they can identify with, someone that they can connect to as well. And there are a range of books out there, some fantastic great ones to kind of look into as well. At the moment, I know it sounds as if um, it's like, oh gosh, we, we're gonna need that, that money, we're going to need, um, money to invest in this but go back to your english lead and say look you know even if you could give us 20 pounds each per class so we could go and get two or three books is that possible a scheme and i know sam's looking at me with like <gasps> but uh, <laughs> you know I, I, I would fight for it i would say look at the end of the day even if you could just squirrel some money away can you go back to finance or can we go somewhere and say look even if you just have a hundred quid and we could just buy a small range of books but just think about where could we find that money to to beef up or get a brand new books? And even if we can't find any books, think about what, like I said before, donations from parents, um, finding that money somewhere as well. Yeah, it's, it's really important to find that investment somewhere um, in some ways. And I, and I I made a promise to myself when I was doing this was I wasn't going to say, you know, dip into your own pocket and use your own money because um, I know how tight it would be. But if you have that possibility you know sometimes it is worth investing one or two if you want to choose something for your class as well but i would never advocate that so please don't don't go away and say the director of english that i have to use my own money because i'm not but it is there as an option if needs be but diversity is important to help engage those reading for pleasure and one thing that i've started to see in a lot of the schools i'm visiting is those really beautiful displays and having those books out where children can see all of these diverse range of books that they can read as well i think julian um, is a mermaid is one that's been used everywhere has as has um look up they've become quite popular but high rise mystery for your year fives and year sixes high rise mystery and it's got a Called, called Mic Drop. They have been brilliant at engaging young boys. Um, and, and I've been using that book and giving it around to my year sixes as I see them. And they keep coming back to me and they keep saying, chapter six. And I'm like, yep, game changer as well. And, and that's a, it's a big one because I know that book. I've spent time investing in it we can have that discussion as well. Thank you, Emma, as well. I've just read that comment as well. Um, yeah, Tempe books from libraries and charity shops as well. Always have a rummage, always have a find as well. I found some really great ones um, in those shops as well. And there's there's loads down at uh, Worcester Park High Street um, around Sutton to kind of have a rummage around. Strangely enough, I've also found books um, in Wilkinson's and oddest place of all was Ikea as well, where they had lots of non-fiction texts like this one, for example, um, literally it was two pounds, uh, an entire little book, little book, and they had a whole collection on different animals as well. And, and I thought the strangest places as well. So constantly look out and see where you can find those books as well. But Amazon Marketplace, I pick up loads really, really dirt cheap as well. Um, access to high quality magazines. And what we did in year six and when I had year five was we had a magazine amnesty and I used to have a box in my classroom and I used to say, guys, if you've got magazines or your parents have got, you know, magazines that are suitable and they finish with them, rather than throwing them out, bring them into our box and having that amnesty. And what it was really nice was we ended up building up these huge boxes of magazines that children could dip in and read. And it wasn't just comic books. It wasn't just um, children's magazines. We had a range of ones. We had like, the National Enquirer. We had... Um, National Geographic. Um, we had all a range of, of magazines that children were bringing in as well. And it was really good to, again, have that time to stop what we're doing, 10 minutes, and let's have a read. And children would, were really engaged as well. And what I found was at the beginning of the year, the boys especially, they were going for the computer magazines, they were going for the football magazines. But as the year progressed on, they started to branch out and choose other books and other magazines because there was that availability as well. So a book amnesty or a magazine amnesty is a really great way. And again, you need to promote that as well. Guys, I've read a really great magazine. Here's a really great article. I'd like us all to read this under the visualizer. I've printed out a copy. Just read it. And at the end of it, 
what's one great thing that you could take away from this as well and again it's removing that that learning they are doing learning but they just don't realize it and what you're doing is you're giving them that freedom of choice um have a look for anything called the aquila magazines um if you ever kind of pop uh, by my office um i have got loads and loads and loads and i must say the courtesy of, of sophie sophie gunner so um, loads and loads of Aquila magazines, but what is great about them is they've got short stories, they've got extracts, and um, they're really, really good if you ever want to kind of invest as well, or you wish your school to invest as well, because they do school subscriptions, and they are absolutely phenomenal, and they're also really good reading comprehensions, they're really good science, uh, geography, history-based Aquila magazines, and again, if that's something you want to talk about with your English lead, having these and then again you can use those to pass around from classes to help build up as well our whiz pop bang are amazing and there's another one as well um where you can actually get a box of books a box of magazines and um, every month delivered and it's part of the first news package and they send you a whole box of magazines every month as well again it's a subscription service but that's really good to help promote the love of reading um Again, first news, I know that lots of schools already invest in this. We actually invested, you can get a free free copies. So again, go on the website and have a little look because even if you just get one free copy, what um, our, our um, ICT lead did was she was able to scan that in and almost make a virtual board as well so that children could have a look on their Chromebooks um, as well. And again, if you're thinking, I haven't got time to scan things in, that's okay because you could you could almost get a child to do it for you as well taking the pictures or again doing that virtually they could do it under their visualizer so there's there's many many ways uh, another one is called the week junior um as well also have a little look at what newspapers are online for children to read or online magazines that they could access for free you've got like oxford owl um burnet news club which is brand new and i know Cheam park farm and um Team Common Junior are, have, have spent some time building upon that. Um, I know Brookfield are a bit interested, but Burnet News Club is a really good way of, got, of introducing news stories and current affairs with children. And because it's online, children can access it straight away as well. Um, comics, I cannot pick this up enough, not just for your boys, but for girls. And one thing that I've noticed in the last five years is there's a trend now to um, to show a range of diversity and child friendly comics that are appropriate for children of a younger age as well. Um, and there's some really brand new imprints that are coming up just for children as well. So again, they're child appropriate. One of the big ones, which was one of the biggest selling of last year was a book called Miss Marvel. Um, and it was actually a Muslim girl who became a superhero. And actually children were more fascinated because they had never seen a, a, a person of, of culture um, taking on that identity. And again, the same with the Spider-Man where the hero had become a, a person of uh, black culture. So again, it's showing children diversity. Um, moving away from the superhero ones, there's also lots of books now that are being turned into graphic novels. Things like Alex Ryder is a really good one. Um, there's Roller Girl. And there's a, another one which has escaped my brain. I'm just looking at my book collection, but it will come to me later. But there are lots where you can um, invest in and have a look. And I think um, one thing that I know for a fact is, again, you can go to eBay, you can go to Amazon, and you can get packs of comics for a few for a few pounds. And again, it's just giving that option to children that there is there is a variety for them to choose on as well. And again, if you don't want to spend your money, I'm not asking you to, but berate your English leads as well, demand. And, and I know Sam's laughing, but I can't get it enough. And, and, I, and I go and do that. I go and I go and say to Sophie, give me some money. I need, I want some money, please. This is how much I want. How much are you going to give me? Um, and I go every week and sometimes she's like, no, you're not having any. Do, do, do. But constantly go back and have that conversation. And the more you have it, the more they're going to get, okay, just Take, take what you need and stuff like that. And again, it might not be a lot, but it's enough for you to go to each teacher or go to each year group and say, look, I'm giving you 30 quid, choose some books, choose some X, Y, and Z, go and invest in something as well. And I'm gonna to come to how you can launch that really excitingly with your children as well. Do you know what, I hope one thing you can see is my enthusiasm. That's 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 the main thing that I hope you take from today is, is knowing books and being enthusiastic. And when you're like this with children, they love it. 
um, rewards and reading raffles are really, really great. And again, we have a system, and again, you can have subsequent systems that if a child reads three times a week independently or four or five times, they get the raffle ticket, and then their name is pulled out at the end of the week, and they win a book as well. And it's a really great way to hook children in as well. What I would say is just bear in mind for those who are weaker readers or who, who may not find or may find reading a struggle, you may want to read with them in class. You may want to give them that time because if they're not being given that time at home, they're never going to have that chance to be in the competition. So again, as a teacher, recognize those children who may struggle, recognize those children who may be disadvantaged in some way and make that an even playing field for them so that they can access those competitions, they have a chance of winning as well. I, I used to know that I used to keep spare reading records in my drawer for the children who I knew would struggle, who would never get it signed X, Y, and Z, and, and, and do that with them on a one-to-one -one basis. And again, we'd make it that really fun experience. We'd have a little snack, have a little treat, let's do some reading together, and actually make it a chance that this is our time. This, I'm investing that time in you. I'm not going to ask you questions on how did that character feel. I'm actually just want to hear you read and, and have some fun. So again, invest that time. And um, Reading raffles are really good as well to, to promote a healthy competition as well. Again, it doesn't have to be giving them a book if you're thinking, oh gosh, that's going to be expensive. Again, choose an appropriate prize um, with the children or some time to do something that they love as well. Making whole class books is a really lovely way to kind of promote reading. And again, it's, it's, it's a really lovely exercise where children can take what they've read, especially if you've done a whole class book, and at the end of it, they can create their own response to that whole class book as well. And these are two examples um, that have been recently produced where children were so engaged by the whole class book after the fall, they wanted to produce their very own newspaper and children did it in a variety of ways. Um, because they did that, they then asked if they could do the same on the next book as well. So again, it's, it's, it's carried that on. And these whole class books are really lovely to have on display so children can reflect on their learning and they can share what they've done um, in class. And if you're a bit like me and you're thinking, I, I, I'm not a great drawer, I'm not a great artist, I haven't got that time, then get the children engaged, scrapbooks, um, making collages, cutting out sniffing pictures. There's lots of ways that they can kind of um, develop and decorate their books as well to make them personal. And then as I said earlier on, those scrapbooking are a great, great way to um, record their learning. Now I know that one class, uh, this is in a previous school, they decided to have just one scrapbook and they, they got a massive A3 art pad and they, they said that every time a child has read a book that they're really passionate about, um, they could be uh, given the task of taking it home and decorating it and making that page and they'd bring it back. And I was always fascinated that the children would bring it back in pristine condition because again, it was that teacher taking that time and making this something to be celebrated, something to enjoy. And that might be worth something to set up if you're thinking actually this could engage my children is someone being able to take that home, decorate it, embellish it, make it a real joy to see. And then they'd come back in class the following week and share that to the rest of the class. This is what I've read, I'd like to share it with you. Now, if you wish to start this off, you may wish to model that first with the children. You may wish to create the first page or the first two pages as well. And that's a really nice um, thing for the children then to pass around. And also as it goes from house to house, parents are also involved. They get to have a look through, they get to see what they're doing. And again, it sparks that interest in reading. Um, I mentioned this before, that, but the drop, stop and read is really popular. And, and again, I was reminded of this because of Manor Park and it's a great method just to literally press a bell ring a ring a uh, something and get the children to literally stop what they're doing and read read to one another if you create reading pairs or reading trios you can almost have fun and say right it's a's turn to read today and b and c you're going to listen or we're going to do it the vice versa and swap that round as well hopefully when when covid has become a bit more relaxed and we're a bit more freer we can also have that opportunity to read between classes go and take that time and organize between your year groups or between um, parallel classes where you can take those children and share that reading. So again, it's that enjoyment, making it a fun experience. And I keep bringing it back to, you know, make it fun, get some rugs out, you know, have a little snack. Use that time where children can say, actually, we're having some fun here. I'm gonna have a read and I'm, and I'm, I'm taking that enjoyment. Or alternatively, you read to the children, drop, stop and read, I'm gonna read, here's a snack, 
everyone listen, I want to read you this page or two as well. I'm all about the snacks, all about it, because at the end of the day, you want to make that environment as homely, as comforting and as positive as, positive as possible. Uh, this is really new, really new. Um, is that book flicks and I keep seeing it everywhere as well and it's a really great way to show children your current display you know trending now books for you books for year groups and these are really popular um, popular displays I mentioned earlier that play pleasure and immersive reading and it's to promote play pleasure so using drama techniques role play in role writing hot seating of characters getting children to act out what they're reading as well and again that comes into that whole immersive play which early years in year one and year two they do so well and and you know if we if we look at those building blocks and we look at year one and year two children come up to key stage two with this real passion for reading their parents have a real desire to know where their reading books are somewhere along the way that is lost and I think for key stage two we need to remember that it's still our duty it's still our job to keep that passion going and yes we have uh, we have a a busier timetable, time is of the essence, but we need to safeguard that time so that children still have that fun and, and push that timetable back. I'm gonna keep that 10 minutes, I'm gonna keep that 15 minutes, that's a luxury, but you know we're gonna keep that time to read, keeping that promotion going as much as possible. Um, intellectual reading. So again, this is where you're giving units of inquiry and if you come back to what I said earlier about having those themed topic displays, this is where children are being able to access a book and then you're giving them opportunities to access even further as well. So you might give them a surface level book of Romans and from that there's five other books that they could go and access independently and continue that reading as well. So they can start to think aloud, have those discussions, carry on that reading further as well. Social reading, again, as I said, is that shared reading. Put signs on your doors, show them what you're reading, foster peer discussion, talk, tell your partner what you're reading. Uh, one really great way that I used to um, promote a love of reading was I had uh, what we call our reading ambassadors as well. And when children used to come in the morning, those reading ambassadors would be sat on a chair at the back. And they literally, the first people that come in, they'd grab and read and they would just say, right, read me a book to me or I'm going to read to you. And it was a case of, you know, taking that moment out to, to read to one another as well. And every day I said, you know, you can't choose the same child, choose someone different. And by the end of the week, you've gone through all 30 children in your class. They've all read to one another at some point during that week as well. And it's giving you that chance then to go and do other things. Maybe go and pick a child to read with or target a child. But they are having an opportunity to read in class to one another. With that, make sure you're checking what books children are reading. Appropriateness. And don't just take a book off a child. That's not good enough for you. That's not acceptable. Encourage them with other choices. You know, that's a really great book you're reading. It's got lots and lots of great vocabulary. Here's some other books you might like to read as well once you finish that. Or if you struggle with that and you're thinking, oh, I don't know what to do. Here are some other recommendations. Turn that into a positive. Children have obviously chosen that book for a reason. Give them the stepping stones to help them get to that point as well. And that is our end of our reading for pleasure as well. So I hope that has given you some ideas um, and just some kind of takeaways uh, to engage children. Lots and lots of things that you can do. But as I said, the main thing is to be enthusiastic, to be positive and to build in those opportunities to read aloud, read with the children, read one to one as well. By providing that environment, by providing that culture that fosters the love of reading, children will naturally want to read as well. But you've got to be doing that every day, all the time. It's got to be a consistent approach in terms of that love of reading. So thank you very much for listening. I'm going to be on here for a couple of minutes if you've got any questions or you wish to ask anything. Um, as I said, if there's any resourcing, anything that you do require, please feel free to drop me an email as well. Otherwise, thank you very much for listening and I hope you have a lovely Thursday. Thanks, Chris. That was really lovely. Thank you very much. It's on mute. Hello. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Hello there. Oh, hi. Um, I've just finished reading. I've got your four at the moment. We've just read The Creakers and they've absolutely loved it. Um, I'm just thinking, can you think of something?